A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about spring and give you seven tips to take amazing spring photos. Morning everybody, great to see you all again. A little bit precarious here, I'm about that far off top of my wellies. If you're anything like me, then you absolutely love springtime. It's one of those absolute fantastic times of the year where new growth starts to appear everywhere. And it's really quite magical. There's daffodils, bluebells, and all sorts of flowers. Everything starts to blossom. The green of the trees is just that vibrant green. But how do you capture it? You know, what, what's the best techniques to actually go and capture that? So today I wanted to go back over some of the shots that I've shot over the last few years and give you seven ways that you can massively improve your photography. So number one is all about macro photography. It's one of the best things to do in spring. And as a landscape photographer, I quite enjoy that because it just gives me a distraction from the, the last six months of probably taking landscapes over autumn and winter. And there's nothing better for macro photography than flowers like daffodils. But there's a few sort of top techniques that you need to use to get the best out of it. And I'll talk about those in a little bit more detail when I get back to my studio. But um, you can see here that the, the daffodils that I showed before, where we, the sun was behind us, look quite flat, whereas these daffodils here, where they're just lit by this soft light, have just got light coming through them, and you can see as I put my hand in front of it how it changes the daffodil, and it really is a great way of photographing them with that sort of soft, diffuse light. Now, the other thing you want to do is try and create separation between the daffodils and the background. So here you can see that um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of in the stream, on the bank, and I can, I've got a lot of separation between the background there so it means that I can have this very green sort of soft canvas behind it and if you use a long lens and if by magic my camera has just appeared so you want to have a long lens like this this is a 270 to 200 millimeter you can use a macro lens as well because that gives you a shallow adaptive feel but I find this is a fantastic lens for doing this type of, of work and then I set it on f 2.8 at 200 millimeters and go to the minimum focus focus distance which will mean I'll be in the middle of the stream, so I'm not gonna exactly show you that, but um, you can then get some, some fantastic shots of, of these daffodils. Quick fact about these daffodils. Now, this stream is just on the road going to my house, and I actually planted these daffodils around about eight years ago, and it's fantastic to see them growing. They just look absolutely beautiful. And what a gorgeous spring morning it is today as well. Right, back to the studio. Hey Pebbles, <laughs> what are you doing? Can't take over the channel. Right, okay, so it would have been good for Pebbles to just do the whole day, I suppose, today, but unfortunately she doesn't know a lot about springtime photography. In fact, she just pulls up all the flowers. Okay, so I wanted to go through these seven things and we'll start with macro photography as I just spoke about when I was just down by the stream there. and. Oh, this is, when I say macro photography, I actually think that this beast here, you know, this, this is an amazing um, lens. It's, it's a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. Um, I've had it for, I think I've had it for eight years or maybe even 10 years. Um, it's, a, it's a Mark I, and I still absolutely love that lens. But what's it, what it really is good at is macro photography. So if we take a look at these photos, so this one here is a daffodil that I took just by the, down by the stream there. And you can see it looks amazing, but it isn't taken with a macro lens. And because you're using this 70 to 200, 200 millimeters at f2.8, then you get an, an incredible separation between the flower and the background. And actually the background here was probably about 10, 10 or maybe 15 meters away. And what I wanted to do is just create something that's super, super simple. There was really flat lighting, no really bright, bright direct, direct sunlight. I'll talk about the backlighting that we had before um, when I was down there, because I took some photos then as well, but this was just flat light. I went really simple, kept it in the middle of the frame. And that's one of the really key things when you're doing this type of photography is to keep it really, really simple. And then, um, 
the other thing is that you have to make sure you you try and cl focus as close as possible. So you know when you, when you're with your 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 lens here, you just you just get as close as possible, as close as it focuses, and then you get a, a smaller depth of field, and that, and that makes a difference to the shot. So this is another one that I took. Um, which was last year, obviously, it was bluebells, and I, I think it looks fantastic. This type of photography, just taking close-up of flowers, is just such a good thing thing to do at this time of year, and it's a, it's a bit of a departure from being a landscape photographer. Okay, the next thing, number two, is using a shallow depth of field, but on a wide-angle lens. So this is a wide-angle lens, it's a 24mm f1.4, so it's a fixed focal length prime lens, it's a Sigma art series, and you can see that um, you know it's it's fairly, it's fairly hefty lens, um, but but it's it's amazing quality. It really is good quality, um, and it's going to roll. I knew it was going to roll. Okay, put it that way. Yeah, so it's a really good quality lens, and what it allows you to do is take wide-angle shots, but have a shallow depth of field in those wide-angle shots. So let me show you what I mean. So this was a shot that I took in. Northern California actually. I, I was shooting these deer, um, but I used a reasonably, I was quite close to these deer, and I used a reasonably wide angle lens on this, but with a really shallow depth of field, and that, that worked really well. And then this one here, I think was probably around about the same, around about 24 millimeters and about f2.8. So you can do some things that are just different, a little bit more creative by using a wide angle and you can set a context for the, for the, for the shot as well. So this one of the lighthouse and, and the new flowers here was taken probably in May and the other one was just late April. The next thing and probably something I'll speak a little bit longer on is, is color because obviously color is really important um, and it it can tell a story really well, and I'll go on to telling a story later, but the best thing about the colors in spring is that they're vibrant. You have this really green, vibrant color, and it just looks amazing. So you probably saw my videos that I did last year on the bluebells, and it wasn't just the bluebells that was really amazing, but it, it, but it was this sort of real sort of, almost like lime green color, which just it, it just shows this fresh growth. and. I think that, again, is something that you really can focus on. And another example of this was in Zion, and um, I was actually looking back at my Zion photos, and one of the things that really struck me was this real contrast between the red rock and, and the green, fresh green colour from spring, and it really contrasted really well. So I found a bit of video, actually, that I did, and this was before just as I was doing my, starting my YouTube channel right in the very early days, but I'd never showed it. So let's go and have a look at that and then we'll, we'll come back. So I've just now come down, just underneath Angel's Landing actually, I'm just walking around the stream just to try and familiarize myself with the area and see if I can just get some snaps really. Um, so that, you know, when I come back, I can know where to go to and part of photography is is exactly that, it's, it's going to one place, understanding what's great about that place, where to go back to, and then seeing if you can get that amazing light. But I have actually seen something just over here, so I'm going to take a quick photo, so if you just turn it around this way, there's a tree here that's just lit up by the sun, and one of the great things about Zion that I've realized is you can photograph throughout the day, really. You get great reflective light off the massive rocks, and it's really warm light as well which is fantastic. We're going to use the backlight that's going to come down onto this tree and the green leaves that are just shooting are just absolutely amazing so hopefully I can get angels landing in the back just the rocks that will probably be a little bit hazy and this brilliant bright green in the foreground. I haven't even got a tripod, don't need one, it's a fast shutter speed, it's going to be great. That was funny, wasn't it? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I got across the message there, which was that this new growth wants to try, try and create, create a contrast between this new growth and the background, and, and try and tell a story of this new growth. Yeah, and it just looked amazing. You know, by using it, backlit as well makes a difference. And I'll go on in one of the future points about back, backlighting and how that, that can be really important in spring photography, especially because you've got those vibrant green leaves. So this is another shot where I'm using color um, 
to try and get across that it's springtime. Uh, this is in the Lake District. Um, I think it was on the top of Home Fell, looking over to the Langdale Peaks, which I, I shoot quite a lot. But I focus on this tree and then I've got the background just as a secondary part of the story really. But it's like this low evening light that's catching these leaves on the silver birch and you can tell straight away it's spring and it just looks fantastic. Um, I really, really love that, 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 that colour that comes across there. So the fourth thing is telling the story of the season and, and, and really all the points of that. So it probably doesn't need its own point, but I, I just wanted to, to emphasise it because I think whenever you're taking any photograph, you should be telling a story. You should be, be trying to explain to the audience, you know, what, what your, you thought when you were in that spot, you know, and try and reflect what it was like when you were in that spot. So this first one, going back to Home Fell, was again those, those, green sort of shoots coming through and again I think it just tells such a good story it shows that there's this new growth in the foreground and I focused on the foreground mid-ground and going right through to the background and these these amazing Langdale Pikes but this was taken with a really wide angle lens obviously I think it was a 10 millimeter on my Fuji and then the other one which is probably not the best ever shot but I think it, it gets across the point and I was trying to shoot the, the shadow of this tree, I liked how it was falling and then the, the curve of the river was going through. It probably didn't quite work um, but I really liked as well how the lambs were, were, were getting the shade of this tree and it told a really nice story. I think if it had got a slightly different angle it would have, would have been a great shot but it does tell a really good story this, you can tell it's spring, we've got lambs there. Um, but you can tell it's getting warmer as well and they're taking shade. So again, you know, in, in, a, in a photo, I've told a little bit of a story there. So the next thing is backlighting um, and how important it is to use backlighting in your spring photography. It makes such a big difference. And there's three photos I want to show here. The first one, going back to Zion. Obviously in that video, you could see that there was real strong light and you could use that backlighting, backlighting a lot to really emphasize the green color in these leaves. Um, and almost the, the, the wall of the canyon looks black but it but it really does em emphasize it with that backlight in hitting the leaves so so do that and to do that you just need to make sure you don't overexpose the leaves so just you know maybe just dial down your exposure just a little bit more than you normally would because you might not quite see it on the histogram but it might slightly be blown out so just be a little bit careful there the other thing you can do is use use backlighting um, and then shoot straight into the sun so this one is a, a good example again it's a a fresh sort of morning, a spring morning, we've got dew on the ground and then that really nice green leaves in the tree. And this is an example of where blue sky works really well. If you get really early in the morning, you just get that, that nice light coming through the tree, you can get the shadows and it can look really, really spectacular. So that's um, backlighting on bigger scenes, but you can also use backlighting on macro shots as well. So this is one that I took this morning when I was down by the stream, just of some daffodils and again, you know, the backlighting not only shows up the, the flower a lot more, but it also creates really nice bokeh elements, those round sort of rings that you get on the dew on the grass, which look really fabulous. Okay, the sixth thing is shooting up. So, you know, shoot up because a lot of things happen above you, especially in trees and woodland, and you can get some really dramatic shots. So if you shoot up in springtime when you've got those nice leaves and you can get some great shots. So this is an example in Muir Woods in um, California when I lived there. Um, I used to go down there. This was early in the, in, in the season where we got some really nice new growth and it just looked fabulous. And the final thing is just foreground is key. So I always think that, I always like shooting foreground, but you don't necessarily always have to have a big vista. So this is a good example of a, a spring scene. So this was new um, fern growth, which looks really, really vibrant at this time of year. And you know, that, 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 fern just looks so good amongst these um, bluebells but I've got a little bit of a story in the forest you can see a little bit of mist um, and by just shooting down not up and, and getting that foreground and again I had a really wide angle lens here I think this was a 10 millimeter lens on my Fuji um, X-T2 it pr produces something that's really quite special and I've you know got those three tones of blue green and brown that all sort of blend together really really well Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that. You've probably seen in the background here, just over there, that I've got the Benro tripod. Um, so I'll just grab it. So this is the tripod for the giveaway. And um, yeah, so I'm giving this away and also the ball head. And I've got a winner. So I've picked at random from 
God, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments on that video, so thanks ever so much whoever entered. It was, it was really difficult, but I had to prick somebody at random, and that was, just let me have a look, drum roll, it was Sam Grundy. So Sam, if you're watching this, get in contact with me, if you just drop me a message um, through my website or, or wherever, and we can arrange delivery of that tripod and ball head. And I'm sure that you'll, you'll, find, you'll find it useful. Okay, before I go, I just want to quickly mention Squarespace, who have sponsored this video. They are just a fantastic website solution. I've mentioned it many, many times before. Again, it's, they've really, really helped me out. One of the things that I've just added is my ebook on my website. So you, you may not know, but I've got an ebook on composition. I mentioned it many videos ago and a lot of people don't know about it I found out because um, I mentioned it on Instagram there was loads of people said oh, I didn't even know you had one so I put it on the home page of my website and it was really easy to do that with Squarespace I just added it in so now you can go to my home page if you want to get my ebook and you can download it it's just pay what you want so if you want to get it for free that's completely fine if you want to donate something and you think it's got some value then I really appreciate that as well and if you're interested in getting your own website then you can go to squarespace.com and if you want 10% off your website or domain, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel and hopefully that'll help you out. Okay, so next week I'm gonna be talking all about style in Lightroom and it's really quite interesting. I'm showing some other photographers' work, some of my favorite photographers and, and, and talking about their style and I'm also showing you some top tips about how you can improve your style in Lightroom as well and I'm also gonna release my presets then as well. I'm still working on my masterclass. It's nearly there, it's nearly there. A few more weeks and we'll definitely be there and thanks for everyone that signed up for, to get more information on that. I really appreciate it. Okay. Go and do some spring photography, you know, try something a bit different. And until next Sunday, bye.